Hi everyone, let's talk about the load time frame scenarios, but first something else that I think will provide you with some insights that are not Elliott Wave related, but will help you in your trading. First of all are the lines that you see on your chart. These are the volume levels from this range over here that you can find with the volume profile tool in TradingView. We have the value area high, the point of control and the value area low and the value area low also has nice confluence over here with this support resistance area. And if I then zoom in, you will see that the value area low has been tested quite a lot of times by now. It's been tested once, twice, three times on the daily, four times actually on the daily time frame. And what is important to know is that if you're ranging against resistance, it's usually a more bullish sign because you're now ranging below resistance. The more often you hit resistance or the more often you're testing support, the weaker it becomes and the higher the chances to break it. So in this particular scenario, what could happen if price is going to range this level of 28.837? Well, we have two options over here. The first one is that if price is going to go to the upside, we can have a deviation where then it continues to the downside. If it moves to the upside quite impulsively, the next target for me that is going to be important is going to take these highs. It's going to be like these highs over here. We have a couple of highs, which basically means there's some liquidity resting above these highs. Price could find its way to the upside, take the highs and then continue to the downside for a corrective wave to the downside. The other scenario, which is a lot more bullish, is that if price is going to go to the upside, then down, backtests the value area low, and then continues to the upside, the next level to look for will be the point of control at 38.7k. And then we have to wait and see what the reaction is going to be here to decide if we will continue to the value area high at 48k, or if price is then going to go to the downside again to the value area low at 28k. So the first level, if price is going to break this level to the upside, is going to be these highs over here. And the second one is going to be the point of control. If you then zoom in, uh, on the lower time frames, and I actually want to go to the one hour, I think this is also important to note. And it, again, it's not necessarily Elliott Wave related, but it, I think it's just interesting as well. Of course, over here, what we see is prices ranging, ranging slowly to the upside, big move to the downside. So basically this range over here is nullified by a very quick move. However, the move to the upside was almost as quick. So a lot of buying power over here. Then price is ranging slowly and steadily to the downside over here. It takes quite a lot of time to go to the downside. But then, and also here, by the way, it's ranging, ranging, ranging. But then with one big candle over here, this whole range is nullified. Like the whole range is undone by one bullish candle over here, taking this range and eventually price finds uh, its way to the upside, where also this whole range over here is taken in a matter of a few candles over here. So you can see that the moves to the upside are very quick compared to the moves to the downside. And this is happening over and over and over again. Also over here, we find our way to the downside, but the way to the upside was quicker than the move to the downside. And once again, price moving to the downside steadily and slowly. But what happened today is prices moving to the upside in just a few candles. So I do think that context is very important in trading. We can have bearish scenarios, we can have bullish scenarios. Yes, we are against resistance. So of course, short trades are valid, right? We have a resistance above us. And actually over here in uh, already a couple of videos ago, this was a uh, short setup as well. Once we took these two highs over here, the double top, this was a short setup, as mentioned in my uh, one of my trading scenarios, as well as the long over here. So basically longing to watch the resistance after the double bottom over here. And of course, there's trades to be had. But I do uh, think that context is very important on the higher time frames and to at least know what is happening and also what might happen because we have been ranging here for so long against resistance, which could be bullish as well, of course, by breaking this and then following to the upside. But now let's go into then the first again medium time frame scenarios and then the low time frame scenarios because I think in, uh, or um, perspective is important. I will keep the volume levels on my chart though. So the first one is the very bullish scenario. And in this scenario, which with each, each video is becoming less likely because price is ranging too long, in my opinion, is this is a wave one, a wave two, then a one, two, one, two, finding our way to the upside. And we want to see this. Basically what this means is the value area low 
is going to be broken to the upside and we're going to find a way to at least the high time frame range point of control. That's basically what this scenario is saying. It's saying, hey, this is a high time frame range one uh, or, or wave one. Then we have a wave two and we are looking for a big three to the upside in this scenario. There's a couple of problems though. First, wave two is very, very short, which is very uncommon. Wave two over here in time is only 23% of the time it took to develop this wave one. And usually wave two is at least 38% of the time it took to develop wave one. This wave two is very, very, very shallow, only hitting the rare target being the 382. And also this wave two over here only hit the rare target at the moment, which is the 382. However, if price comes down another time, I do think this whole scenario is invalidated if it's gonna take these lows at about 26.5K, because if this is then a wave one and this whole thing is gonna be a wave two, in my opinion, wave two is way too long it's really really trying to stretch it um, and that's not something i like to do also the volume is not really on our side if this is going to be a big yellow wave three you want to see volume continuing to increase like it did over here with these couple of candles but volume has been going down 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 the more we are ranging which of course is not necessarily a very bullish sign so yes we are against resistance we might be able to find a bit more upside maybe take a couple of highs as well but at the moment, still as it stands, my still preferred scenario on on like say the medium time frame is a bearish one. Um, and of course, we are in bullish market structure, so you definitely have to um, make sure that if you are shorting in a bullish scenario or in a bullish environment, you really really want to like follow your strategy, build your strategy, follow your trading plan and also have clear entry requirements to enter your short positions and know what you're doing, have your targets ready, your stop loss, your entries and all that stuff. In this scenario, wave three ends over here, four ended over here, and we are here ending either wave five is already ended and we're gonna find a way to the downside now. So then this was a solid resistance and we've basically done a little bit of like a circle like this, which is fine, which is absolutely cool. Um, in this scenario, which is also uh, my preferred scenario at the moment on the medium time frame. So then this resistance would indeed act as resistance. I do think that if price is now going to move to the downside though, and we are, if we're going to turn around here or turn around lower, it doesn't really matter. But if we're then going to find a way to the upside once more and test the high time frame range value area low once again, I do really, really think we're going to break the high time frame range value area low. But now that we're trained, basically, uh, finding our way to the value area low for the first time over here like the first time is of course already the past couple of days but the first time reaching this level in a very 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 long time it can act as resistance finding our way to the downside and then once we go up we could break it in this scenario that is exactly what is about to happen so in this scenario we have an extended wave one in blue then we have a wave two three four five wave two wave four hitting the most common uh, fibonacci levels retracement levels for a wave two and a wave four if wave one is extended which is what i'm looking for wave three doesn't have a target but wave five does most common wave five target is the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.786 which has a maximum target of 30.4k so in this scenario one would short basically um, over here inside this target area from the high time frame range value area low lettering the shorts stop loss safely above and then trading it to the downside in this particular scenario of course it's shorting in still a bullish environment so make sure you trade safe uh, but yeah this is one of the scenarios on the medium time frame if we then go to the lower time frame and i'll switch to the one hour chart in this scenario one of the uh, you say you see i have two bearish scenarios and then three bullish ones over here wave five has already ended with this wick over here and we are now in a corrective structure which is then an a b c this a being a three wave structure now looking for a three wave in the b where the most common target for an expanded flat wave b is between the 1.236 and the 1.38 which is between 29.5k and 29.8k before then finding our way to the downside um, at the moment, by the way, this is for me an alternative scenario. Then another scenario that I have over here is definitely the more bearish one. So over here, we wicked. Well, I think this is also important talking about context. So we made a double top over here. And then with this wick, we took the liquidity above the double top, again, backtesting the high time frame range, value area low, including of course then taking the liquidity moving to the downside so then this is the end of wave five which is also again inside the target area 
for the medium time frame wave five, tar wave five target. Sorry. So then in this particular scenario, this is, is then a wave one, followed then by an A, B, C in two, before then a bigger three to the downside. However, I don't really like this wave one, and also it can still be then a one, two, one, two, and then eventually a three to the downside. However, if this is a one, two, one, two, you usually want to see the second one take at least the low of the first one, which did not happen. So therefore, I think that is quite unlikely in this scenario. But also this being a diagonal is quite unlikely because a diagonal, well, if this is a diagonal, a wave one, two, three, four, five, Wave three, if this is a leading diagonal, a contracting diagonal, wave three is not allowed to be longer than wave one. But in this scenario, wave three is longer than wave one. So this over here does not feel like an impulse to me. However, I, th I do think, especially with this wick over here, that we do need to have at least this scenario on the chart so that we always remind ourselves that there is a bearish scenario. It might not necessarily be the preferred scenario, but it is something that we have to think to, to take into account when trading the charts as well with the bias that we have. Because if you do trade Elliott waves or if you even use Elliott waves in your analysis, you always need a bullish and a bearish count. Don't let your bias be one way only because you will be surprised how often that will go wrong. Then we have the very bullish uh, scenario here once again, where this is a one, two, one, two, one, two. And then eventually in white, you have another one, two over here before you would now expect the most insane explosive move to the upside you have ever seen in your life. But as you can see, it's not really happening. So um, volume again going down, even in this range, you can actually see the volume is just down, 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 down. There's no volume at all. Uh, people probably get very, very bored because of this range. And honestly, it's quite a difficult range from an Elliott wave perspective as well. I definitely use some other technical analysis for the trading setups that I've been showing in, uh, in, in, in my videos in the past couple of well weeks now, actually, I believe. So, uh, or one and a half week or two weeks by now. So yeah, very interesting range. But in this scenario, you would expect this to be a one, two, and then move to the upside. If we're going to take these lows and price is moving to the downside, this scenario is for me definitely invalidated. And of course, this potential long setup is then invalidated as well, because the invalidation is this uh, these lows over here. But in this particular scenario, it's basically entering the longs in this area, stop loss below, trading it to the upside for the most insane you move you're ever gonna see. But yeah, at the moment, it doesn't look very likely. Um, the two scenarios bullish wise that I think are a bit more likely from a bullish perspective. So from, from a bearish perspective, I think still, yes, this might not be the cleanest wave one, but then a one, two and move to the downside is probably bearish wise my i guess preferred scenario uh, at, at the moment one could say but then from the bullish scenario i basically have these two over here so the first one would be that um it doesn't matter what this is i've literally been looking only at this part of the chart and then we have a three wave down followed by a three wave in x and then another looking for another three wave in y and wave y over here the target for a wave y has confluence with this target box over here as well which is between 27.2k and 26.9k so there's a little bit of additional support over here however with each drop that we make we are building bullish divergences so also between this low and this low and also these lows and these lows there's constantly bullish divergences on the chart so if i'm actually going to show you uh, the CVDs and you can find this by the way this is AGGR you can google it or go to my discord and it's in the good to know channel um, if you open CVD or use CVD what you want to see in a bullish scenario at least is price making higher lows but then the two lines at the bottom making lower lows and as you can see basically already for a while price <laughs> just look at look at it price is making higher 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 highs or higher lows I should say higher lows higher lows higher lows but eventually it's just going to the downside, which is uh, bullish quite aggressively as well. But here at the moment, more locally, you can see that between these uh, these lows over here that we made and these lows over here, clearly, of course, higher lows. And on the chart, you can clearly see that the CVD is moving to the downside. So people are selling, 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 selling. But basically what it means is a bigger position is absorbing the sell orders. <clears throat> sorry, for then potentially a continuation to the upside. Uh, of course, CVD can be leading, 
it can be leading, which basically means that price is going to follow the CVD lines to the downside. But so far with the whole move upwards, it, this is definitely something to take into account if you're going to short this high or anything over here, because what you actually want to see if price is really, really, really going to be at a certain pivot point, like a turnaround point, for example, for a bigger move to the downside, what I usually would like to see is to see bearish divergences. So then we have this high, we make lower highs, but then higher highs on the CVD. But as you can see, that is currently not happening. There's no bearish divergences over here on at least the one hour time frame where between the high that we made and then the lower highs over here. So instead, you see bullish divergences. So that's definitely something to take into account when you're talking about shorts or when you may be thinking about short positions in your trading. Not saying you can't trade shorts because there's many shorts to be had in uh, this range as well, uh, especially the scenario that we had a couple of videos ago over here was a very nice one, to be honest. However, it is something to keep in the back of your mind. So in this particular scenario, wave Y would end over here. Don't really like the fact that this wave W is so short compared to then a very long wave Y. So out of the two scenarios, bullish ones, this is probably my alternative, but this is still an important support area for the chart. However, it will be very, very low to these lows. So one has to watch out because the moment we drop here, I do think we can drop quite far to at least the support area, the target box down here, which is sitting at, let me have a quick look, 24.850. That's basically where it is starting, uh, in my opinion. And then the final low time frame scenario is going to be this one where wave five is not yet finished. We might be looking for some sort of a diagonal uh, to then again also take the liquidity maybe of these highs over here. That would be quite a stretch, not, uh, not, not going to lie. Uh, but at least in this scenario, we are still looking for a little bit more upside. And in this scenario, wave Y is already in. So we then have a three wave in W, a zigzag, expanded flat in wave X, and then some sort of a zigzag in wave Y, where the second part, the second leg of the zigzag is stretched. It went to the rare target, the 1.618 over here. Uh, but this scenario so far has not yet been invalidated. As you can see, the invalidation is below the wick over here at 27.5K. 20, uh, but so far, we have not reached this invalidation level. So yeah, so far, so good. You don't want to see this breach because then, of course, this scenario is invalidated. So this is what I wanted to say. Quite a lot of information and a lot of thoughts and a lot of context. Uh, price can, can go up, price can go down, it can go anywhere, of course, but it's about what you do based on the information that we have. So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you, and I'd like to thank you for watching and subscribing, and see you at the next one. Bye-bye.